Hello and welcome to Happy Half Hour, a new show on Peoria Life brought to you by Enjoy Peoria. I'm your host, Casey Geyer, and you can join me here every Tuesday at 1030. On today's show, we're going to be sitting down with Peoria Area's original escape room, Escape Peoria. And we're going to talk about everything from their rooms to their take-home escape games. And then we're going to welcome my friend Andrew Barra. He is my coworker and the resident sport aficionado. And he's going to talk with Bobby Parker from Bradley University about the Braves men's and women's basketball. So we'll also fill you in on some fun events happening in the Peoria area this week. So sit back, relax, and have fun with us. We'll be right back with some happy half hour. Looking for a good place to enjoy a cold one? Head on over to Corey's Pub. You can go and relax by yourself or with a group of friends. Corey's has drink specials every day and a delicious menu. And their Four Seasons patio is the perfect place to relax after a long day. Do you want to find out more about what's going on in the Peoria area? Well, check us out at enjoypeoria.com. Welcome back to Happy Half Hour. Um, as you might have noticed, escape rooms are popping up all over the country, and Peoria is no exception. Escape Peoria is located in East Peoria, and it is the area's original escape experience. And However, they offer way more than just the escape rooms, and joining us to talk about them today is Alicia Wheeler. Thanks for coming on. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah. First, can you just tell me about Escape Peoria? Yeah, so we are a team building and training company, and we specialize in escape room games. So the idea is that participants are locked in a room for 60 minutes, and they have to try to figure out how to get out by solving a series of puzzles and clues that eventually leads them to their escape key. Wow. Well, that sounds... I've actually done a few, and they are so much fun. Um, how many different rooms do you have? So at our facility, we have five different rooms. Um, each room has a different scenario. Um, they also have different escape rates. And that gives you a, a better idea of how many people have escaped previously. Cool. So you can kind of you can kind of judge like the the hardness of the room and like by the escape rate and decide which like there's a beginner level, medium. Yeah, so wow. each one has a different percentage. We try not to say easy or hard yeah. just because okay. sometimes we have participants that go into a room that has a very low escape rate and they end up escaping and then they go into one that has a much higher escape yeah. rate and they don't get out. It just depends on how your brain works and the different perspectives you bring to the table. Very cool. So what do you think has helped the escape room craze take off in the Peoria area? So I think escape rooms have kind of just taken off across the country, really across the world. Um, I think part of it is that it's just such a fun and unique experience mm -hmm. that isn't offered other places. Um, so it's something where you get to disengage, you kind of um, set technology aside, and you really just get to interact with each other um, and think about things in a new way. I know, especially for team building, the biggest aspect is that it brings all those essential skills that we know are important in the workplace, mm -hmm. um, such as communication, collaboration, critical thinking, creativity. It's hard to find activities that foster all of those skills at the same time, but escape rooms definitely do that. Oh yeah, for sure. So you said team building. How many people um, can usually, what's like the minimum and the maximum number for an escape sure. room? So we, we require that you participate with at least two people. Okay. Um, and then the maximum just depends on the room size. So it could vary. I think at the East Peoria location, some of the rooms max out at eight, some max out at 10. It just depends on which room you okay. go into. Very cool. Um, I know you uh, you guys also do a lot of team building. Can you tell me a little bit more about, about the team building experiences you offer? Yeah, so we have several different team building opportunities um, for corporate groups. Um, one of them is the escape rooms, which is obviously great because, again, it fosters those skills of communication, oh, yeah. collaboration, critical thinking, creativity. Um, but some other ones that we have um, are blended perspectives. We really enjoy blended perspectives a lot. How that one works is... Uh, Participants are broken up into smaller groups, usually like two to four, and they're given a picture, and they have to do their best to recreate that picture to the best of their ability. So there's no instruction. They just work together to try to recreate the image. And at the end, this is kind of a spoiler, um, but the <laughs> idea is that they put all their pictures together because each group has been assigned a much smaller picture of a larger image. Oh, cool. And so when they put all those pieces together, you get to see the final image, and it gives a great talking point about how um, every group brings their own unique perspective to the table. And when we appreciate all those different perspectives, even if it doesn't mean that our team looks like what we thought it may look like, it still makes something that's really beautiful. And so um, that's a really fun event for corporate groups. And the best part is they get to take the image yeah. with them and they hang them up in, for yeah, the office, in the too. office and reminds everyone of that activity that they did together. And then another thing that we have is our lockbox showdowns. So those are a 60 minute activity and they're similar to escape rooms, um, but they don't have quite the same immersive element. Instead, it's more of a beat the box challenge. So each group, um, and you can put it on for any number of participants. So it could be five participants or it could be 400 participants all oh in the gosh. same room at one time. And they work with whoever's seated at their table. 
um, to move through that puzzle, solve all the different clues that gets them to whatever their final objective is, okay. which instead of an escape key could be a code name or something like okay. that. Okay. Very cool. So with the, um, you've brought some things with you today. And so like we said, you do more than just escape rooms. You have some, some take-home experiences. And can you tell us a little bit about some of these? Yeah. So um, at SmartPath, we started exploring different options for escape games okay. because we saw how successful they were in our rooms. But the rooms are obviously limited because you can only fit, you know, eight or ten people in them. Um, and so we wanted to create experiences that you didn't have to schedule an appointment for with something people could do on their own time and that would get them outside of our rooms. Um, and so we started designing different what we call Emmy challenges. Okay. Um, and so we have them that you can take and do at home. It could just be done around your kitchen table. And we have other ones that are location specific. So this one that I have right here is for Miller Park Zoo in Bloomington. So it's a puzzling scavenger hunt where you go around the zoo and collect different bits of How information. Cool. Um, and it works in conjunction with our app. So you can play with up to five players um, per packet. And you just pull out the different materials. Some of them may tell you to open them at different times. Um, but the idea is each one gives you a new piece of information on top of what you're collecting around that area area um, to solve the puzzle and complete the challenge. So this one's for Miller Park Zoo. We had this one that was designed for kids um, around Christmas time. So that was a really fun activity and that one could just be played at home. This one goes around Uptown Normal in Bloomington. Okay. Um, so we have some that are definitely location specific and some of them that we've developed so far and launched have been Bloomington based, but we are in the process of working on ones that are specific to Peoria. So I know one that's going to launch relatively soon is one that'll be along the waterfront in Peoria. Very so cool. really fun activities and definitely engaging whether you do them for social purposes or whether you decide to buy multiple packets and do it as a team building challenge. Very cool. And it's a really cool way, I think, to get, you know, locals out and really experiencing our area in kind of a new way and seeing it through for sure. through different, mm -hmm. different vision. I know you also work with area schools um, through a lot of STEM activities. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, so we work with schools in a variety of ways. We offer a lot of professional development that are um, based or focused on educators, but then we also are contracted through the EDC and the Chamber in McLean County to head up the STEM initiative there. So for anyone who's unfamiliar, STEM is science, technology, engineering, and math. Um, and the idea is that we know that students going into the workforce need these uh, essential 21st century skills skills. And STEM is very much um, prompting these types of skills because we know no matter what career you go into in the future, you're going to have some form of technology like these skills oh, yeah. are things our students need. Um, and workforce is showing us that there are a lack in some certain types of skills. And so what we do is we pair different businesses and corporations um, with area schools. So whether that means bringing an industry expert into the classroom and getting students that information early on, whether it's having a business tell us we know in the future um, we're going to be lacking in this particular skill set, and then creating different classes or different activities that promote that specific type of skill set. So we're equipping our students to be successful far beyond the classroom. That's fantastic. Um, yeah. So that's the idea with the STEM initiative and also connecting all the area schools so that they're working together towards this goal of creating these 21st century skills. Um, so that means if a uh one school is offering a program that is STEM-based that maybe they open it up and allow students from other schools to participate in it as well. And we're kind of the middleman, making sure that all of this stuff is getting coordinated and the right people are getting connected. That's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, well, we're, we're uh, almost out of time, but I've got to ask, because I know we talked about this earlier. You actually helped create some of these escape games. And if you've ever done one, they're just, they're nuts. Every time I've done one, <laughs> we end up leaving, leaving going, who on earth thought of this? How, what's the process behind creating a game like this? I don't know if there's a specific process. I think it's just a lot of brainstorming yeah. and a lot of, hey, let's try this, and then someone else chimes in with another idea. And it's it's actually very similar to how um, it the game is solved in yeah. the room because there's a lot of different collaboration and people giving different insights that prompt things from other people. And so um, it's just being creative and making sure that you're looking at everything from a, a different perspective. Yeah. And that can be a little bit challenging, but it's definitely a lot of fun to create, and our team has a blast working together. So That's awesome. And we'll well, they're really addicting. I know that. It's awesome that you have so many rooms because once you escape one room, I think that it just like, it charges you. You're like, you feel like the smartest person alive and you want to escape all the rooms. Yes, we so. frequently have people who escape <laughs> one room and say, can we go do another one? Yeah, well, that's awesome. Um, and it's great that you guys have brought that to the Peoria area. Thank you so much. Yeah. So if you guys are looking for a fun date night or a unique team building experience, check out Escape Peoria. Um, you can head to their website at escapepeoria.us. Stay tuned, more happy half hours ahead. Hi, I'm Jake. 
I've been with Connected Restaurant for 10 years. Today I will be making our Chilean sea bass, El Branzino. Need a jolt to start your morning? Head over to The Blend. This locally owned coffee shop brews the perfect concoction to help you through your day. But it's not just a place to get great coffee, it's also a community gathering spot. Step inside Sentimental Journey for gifts for any occasion. They strive to bring in new and trending gifts along with the tried and true. Do you want to find out more about what's going on in the Peoria area? Well check us out at enjoypeoria.com. Welcome back to Happy Half Hour. Well, if you haven't seen the Bradley Braves men's and women's basketball team in action yet this season, you only have a couple more chances to do so. Both teams have one home game left this regular season before they start their conference tournament. Joining us today is Associate Athletic Director Bobby Parker. Bobby, thanks for joining us. Appreciate you having me. Uh, Bobby, first thing, um, let's let's start with the men. Uh, they only have a week left of their, uh, their regular season and um, been a pretty successful season. Talk about that a little bit. Yeah, it's uh, definitely been a good year for the for the Braves. Uh, we continue the the upward trend, the movement, as we like to call it, and and the program is definitely moving in the right direction. And uh, you know, pretty excited to uh, to send off Dante Thomas uh, on Saturday for uh, Senior Night when we play Indiana State. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, but but you know, going back to the. Uh, uh, the movement and, and turning the corner. I feel like a lot of fans in the Valley knew that this was, was, was coming um, with the um, coach Wardle and, and seeing how the team has progressed the last couple of years. It was like, it's only a matter of time that you start seeing this success, right? Yeah. I think, uh, I think you could see it toward the end of the season last year. Uh, we won four straight to end the year, uh, taking us into the quarterfinals of, of the Missouri Valley conference tournament. And I think during that, that winning streak uh, toward the end of the year, uh, while we had been making strides, uh, I think that was when it really clicked that uh, we are indeed uh, moving in the right direction and, and there were better days ahead. And, and I think certainly this year we've taken another step forward, uh, I would say a big step, uh, to go into February uh, in, the, in the race you know, for the Missouri Valley Conference Championship uh, was a great step forward for the program. Uh, we obviously have more steps to take. Um, but there's, there's no doubt that the, the program's trending in the right direction, and I think our fans are starting to, to not only see it, uh, but, but back it as well. What does that do to help rebuild the atmosphere inside Carver Arena? I remember I was at the uh, Bradley ISU game uh, last week, and, and I haven't seen a crowd that rowdy in Carver mm -hmm. Arena for a couple years. Yeah, it's the, the energy level the last uh, three or four games uh, at home is, has really been noticeable. Um, it's been great. The, the Loyola game uh, on January the 31st, you know, the team leading the league, uh, the team that's already clinched a share of the, of the championship and is probably going to win the, the Missouri Valley Conference title outright. You know, we, we went toe-to-toe -to -toe with them, Carver Arena. The crowd was engaged from the beginning. The energy level was just different. You know, it was a great vibe. Uh, in the building and, and reminiscent of, of what our fans are, are used to and, and accustomed to over the, the history of Bradley basketball, um, you know, and, and it made a difference. Uh, it gave the team a lift and, and we were able to knock them off on uh, January the 31st. And, and that's the type of atmosphere that we're looking for as, as the crowds continue to grow. Um, you, you talked about the, uh, the Indiana State game this Saturday. That's their last home game and their last game of the regular season. And, and your guys' spot in the standings and, and seeding for the conference tournament is still up for grabs. Um, talk about why this game's important and, and why it's important for people to come to the game. Yeah, there, there's a lot on the line when we have a game tomorrow night at Missouri State and then the regular season finale on Saturday against Indiana State. 
Um, so seeding is, you know, who knows at this point. There's still a lot of scenarios uh, that can play out. Uh, but these two games gives us a chance to, to definitely finish in the top half of the league, which, again, is another great step forward. Um, but, you know, on a, on a more personal level, um, it's going to be Dante Thomas's senior night, senior day, uh, that 3 o'clock game against Indiana State. And, and you're talking about a, with the player, uh, the only player, uh, that was left from the transition uh, from Coach Ford to Coach Wardle. Um, you know, he showed faith in, in Bradley University and, and Bradley basketball and Coach Wardle, and he's been rewarded, you know, for that faith. He's, uh, he's going to graduate um, with over a 3 uh, GPA, social work major. I know he's talking about wanting to go to graduate school when, when his basketball career uh, comes to an end, and that's going to be a few years from now because I'm sure he'll go and, and play professionally. But, um, you know, he's given so much to the program. Uh, over these four years, um, you know, and, and to go through what he went through at the beginning uh, of the program and to where we are now, um, I think it's pretty special. And, and I hope that our, our fans will come out, as I'm, I'm sure they will, and, and give him a proper send off. And, you know, I don't know if people realize this, but he's going to finish in the top 10 in Bradley history for career rebounds. Um, and I'm not sure, you know, you would have guessed that um, four years ago. Uh, but he's going to end up with more rebounds than anybody in uh, the last quarter century of Bradley basketball. So it's uh, he's had a special career, yeah. and, and I'm really looking forward to, to his senior day. And someone that loyal to the to the program, especially like you said during the transition, that um, uh, it's almost like a lot of Bradley fans, you know, that are he, here in town or around the area should go to this game, not just to to see a great game. So it's going to be a really good game. I mean, and there hasn't been one Valley game I've seen this year that hasn't been exciting. But for the fact that, like, he paid his due, you know, right. every everyone else should, you know, everyone should come out and, and kind of show right. that their loyalty as well, right? Yeah, for sure. And, you know, and really it's more than Dante as well. I mean, the whole team, you know, has really bought into to the movement. And, and you know, raising the level of Bradley basketball and, and getting Bradley basketball back to to whatever where everybody ex- expects it to be. But you know, the guys they play hard, they're invested, uh, they're a good group of guys to be around. You know, I think their passion, not only for the game but for Bradley, is evident um, when they're out on the court. Uh, I love it when you know when the games are over and they go over and they high five the student section, they high five the band, uh, they high five the fans on their way off the floor. Um, it's definitely a, you know, a community effort and, uh, you know, they've put in the work and, and coach Wardle has, has told them, you know, when they enjoy success and they start winning and defending the home court, uh, the crowds will be there. And I think over this past month, you know, they've really seen that and seen the crowds grow. Uh, and I'm looking forward to seeing what, uh, what the atmosphere is like on Saturday. And also Saturday night, um, the, uh, Bradley club raffle presented by Southside, uh, trust and savings bank. What is this raffle? Yeah, the, the Braves Club raffle, um, again presented by Southside South Side Savings and Trust, um, is a twenty-five thousand dollars grand prize uh, for the winner. So wow. the tickets are a hundred dollars a piece. You can still buy them. Uh, you can get them through the Braves Club, and, and you can go to BradleyBraves.com and, and get the Braves Club information uh, to purchase those tickets. But uh, it's a major fundraiser for the athletic department. Uh, they only sell a thousand, um, you know, and and there's a little over forty thousand dollars in prizes. Um, that are given away uh, through the through the uh, uh, various drawings, and uh, yeah. So uh, <laughs> you said a pretty thousand, nice. You can come out, thousand, come out to the game Saturday. Tickets. Yeah, come out to the game Saturday. Uh, get your ticket. They are hundred dollar tickets, um, but you know you can come out support Dante Thomas and the team on, on Senior Day, and you know maybe walk home with twenty five thousand dollars too. In the words of uh, a Dumb and Dumber, so you're saying there's a chance. I'm <laughs> saying there's a chance. Someone's going home yeah. pretty, pretty happy. Uh, pretty happy. Yeah, and there's uh, there's additional prizes uh, as well. So uh, um, it's definitely a worthwhile uh, investment in, in Bradley Athletics. Well, it seems like that's a, it's a pretty no brainer that you should be right. going out to Carver Arena Saturday. Switching gears um, to the women's team, they they have another week and a half left because women's mm-hmm. basketball runs a, a week longer than men's basketball the regular right. season. Um, they have a a, a whole uh, Three, four games. Three, three, three games. games. Um, and their last home game um, is against I seventy four Revel Illinois State. But it's also senior night for, if I have the number correctly, four seniors, right? Uh, I believe there's five. Actually. Five seniors. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, why should people come out and, and see the women um, over at the Coliseum? Yeah, I mean they, they play a great a great brand of basketball. Uh, again, it's the same as I mentioned with the men. I mean the, the effort that you know that all of our student athletes put into to competition is is amazing. Um, you know, they, they work hard. Uh, they play an up-tempo uh, style of game. Uh, we've got shooters, you know, rebounders. 
um, you know, they've got all all the pieces. And and again, we're seeing very similar a process with their women's basketball program compared to the men. Uh, Coach Gorski now in her second year um, since taking over the program and, and has made strides uh, in each of the the two years. And and while we you know want to celebrate our senior class uh, when we play Illinois State in two weeks or a week and a half at this point. Um, you know, we've got a great freshman class coming in and, and uh, doing great things. And so the future is definitely bright uh, for the women's basketball program as well. And, you know, that game against Illinois State is probably going to determine uh, who plays on Thursday and who plays on Friday at the, at the Missouri Valley Conference tournament. And it'll be a big game. And that's a big deal for a lot of people who don't know that Thursday game. I don't think just going back as far as I, I've, I've researched, no one's ever made it out of, you know, one Thursday, but then ended up winning Friday. And especially in the Valley for both men's and women's, it's usually, the winner is usually the only one that the winner of the tournament is usually the only one that goes to the uh, NCAA tournament. So yeah. the, the difference between playing starting Thursday and starting Friday is a big deal, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, you want every advantage you, you can get, uh, no question. And, uh, you know, definitely, you know, not having to play a game uh, in the tournament is is a big advantage. But, uh, you know, I think both of the, the leagues this year, I mean, I think there are scenarios where if the regular season champion doesn't win the tournament, uh, you know, both of our leagues could be looking at, at multiple bids uh, to the NCAA tournament. But uh, there's only one sure way to punch your ticket, and that's to win the conference tournament. So you want to do everything you can to, to give yourself the best opportunity to, to do that. To the people that say that the Valley – uh, conference for men's and women's basketball isn't what it used to be. Really needs to go out and check out some of these games. Well, you know, it's interesting, you know, particularly this year on the men's side, uh, the league is ranked seventh and eighth uh, in RPI throughout the year this year. Uh, I believe last year we finished 12th uh, in the conference ranking. So despite the changes in, uh, in the league membership uh, and everybody predicting the demise of Missouri Valley Conference basketball, the depth of the league is, is as good as it's been in, in really a uh, number of years. And, uh, you know, so it, it's been a battle every night in both men's and women's. So definitely check out those last two games. Um, uh, one last question for you, uh, not basketball related, but just athletics related. Uh, uh, this is, and this is something that you told me the other day, and I was kind of surprised. But this is your busiest time of the year because almost all the programs are in season right now. Yeah, this is crazy. Uh, you know, from really the second week of February uh, to deep into March, uh, virtually all of our teams are in season. Uh, volleyball and, and men's soccer are in their practice seasons. Uh, but they play, you know, they play games and uh, this time of year and uh, in a couple of weeks, they'll, they'll start playing games as well. So we flirted with uh, having a softball game outside on, on Sunday and the weather just didn't quite cooperate enough. But we hosted a tournament at the Louisville Slugger Sports Complex in the Dome uh, two weeks ago. Baseball got started this week. Uh, the track teams are have the conference championships and the, the indoor um, MVC championships are this coming weekend. Tennis is a month into their season now, so it's uh, women's golf teams are playing right now, uh, and the men's golf team starts next week. So it's, yeah, yeah, everybody, everybody's in action. <laughs> you're you're in you're in like probably five hour energy mode right now yeah, with all bit. this with your position. Um, so well, Bobby, thank you so much for joining us, and, and like you said, uh, two more basketball games, one for the men, one for the women, um, and then all the spring sports. If you want to go out to one of the games, looking for tickets, head over to bradleybraves.com and just go through their website. Stay tuned. More Happy Half Hour is next. Get out your calendars because we're about to fill your free time. The official Spring Home Show returns to the Peoria Civic Center February 23rd through 25th. A variety of home building and remodeling products and services will be available for you to explore. This is the largest gathering of home builders and contractors that you'll find in the Peoria area. Shake off the winter blues at the 4th Annual Cabin Fever Party at Five Points, Washington, Saturday, February 24th. Enjoy an evening of great music from Jam Sandwich, tons of dancing, a cash bar with drink specials. Plus, you are welcome to bring a bite to eat. Tickets are just $15 in advance. Bradley men's basketball is nearing the end of their season, and you just have one more chance to catch the Braves in action at Carver Arena. February 24th, the Braves finish off Missouri Valley Conference play. If you haven't seen the team yet, you definitely don't want to miss this one. You can buy tickets at bradleybraves.com or at the Peoria Civic Center Toyota box office. Looking for live music in the Peoria area? A new Facebook page has you covered. Peoria Music Live is a great resource for music entertainment in the Peoria area. They promote a wide variety of shows, from open mic nights to big concerts. If you want in on the Peoria area music scene, check out Peoria Music Live on Facebook. Visit enjoypeoria.com for more information on these events and more. Or follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Enjoy Peoria.
Well, that's all the time we have for fill your free time, or for happy half hour. Um, Time really does fly when you're having fun. Remember, if you're ever looking for something fun to do, whether it be a cool restaurant or a new attraction or even a weekend event, check us out on enjoypeoria.com or follow us on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. And as my mom says, if you're bored, it's because you're boring. So get out there and enjoy Peoria. Thanks. Have a great day. Get out your calendars because we're about to fill your free time. The official Spring Home Show returns to the Peoria Civic Center February 23rd through 25th. A variety of home building and remodeling products and services will be available for you to explore. This is the largest gathering of home builders and contractors that you'll find in the Peoria area. Shake off the winter blues at the 4th Annual Cabin Fever Party at Five Points, Washington, Saturday, February 24th. Enjoy an evening of great music from Jam Sandwich, tons of dancing, a cash bar with drink specials. Plus, you are welcome to bring a bite to eat. Tickets are just $15 in advance. Bradley men's basketball is nearing the end of their season, and you just have one more chance to catch the Braves in action at Carver Arena. February 24th, the Braves finish off Missouri Valley Conference play. If you haven't seen the team yet, you definitely don't want to miss this one. You can buy tickets at BradleyBraves.com or at the Peoria Civic Center Toyota box office. Looking for live music in the Peoria area? A new Facebook page has you covered. Peoria Music Live is a great resource for music entertainment in the Peoria area. They promote a wide variety of shows, from open mic nights to big concerts. If you want in on the Peoria area music scene, check out Peoria Music Live on Facebook. Visit enjoypeoria.com for more information on these events and more. Or follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at enjoypeoria.